In this video, I'd like to show you how you can set up your own camera in Maya from scratch. And the benefit of setting up your own camera is that it allows you to have more control over specific uh, components of the camera, specifically the film back or the sensor size, as well as the focal length. So having a new custom camera in Maya allows you to take more control over the settings of that camera. The camera in Maya is based on a real world camera. So anything you can do with a standard camera, you can also do inside the virtual camera of Maya. A standard camera in the real world is made up of two basic components. You have the camera body and the camera lens. And these two components are interchangeable. So you can have a variety of different camera bodies and a variety of different camera lenses. And theoretically, you could mix and match and connect any one of these lenses to any one of the different cameras. And when we talk about different camera bodies, we're really talking about different sensor sizes. And that's an option that you can control in Maya, as well as changing the different focal length that you would get with different camera lenses. So all of this functionality is built into the virtual camera inside of Maya. Many people will uh, launch Maya and start modeling using this perspective camera, and they'll use it as their main camera to render the scene from, and that can be problematic because you can accidentally move this perspective camera, and uh, for me, it's much more useful to keep this as a kind of a, a utility view to view the scene from. When you create a custom camera, it allows you to designate that camera as the camera that the scene will be rendered through. That way you have a specific camera only for rendering and another camera for modeling and laying out your scene. So I'll show you how to set up that custom camera now. I'm gonna come up here to the drop down menu and choose Create and Cameras. I'm just gonna to choose to create a camera only and that will put a new camera at the origin of my scene. And the next thing I wanna do is rename that camera. So currently the shape node is selected. I'm gonna come over here to the transform node and rename that as shot underscore and then put a pound sign in there. And when I hit enter, that pound sign is gets converted into the number one. So now I'm gonna change up my views here so I can see both my perspective camera and my shot camera. So I'll click on this panel layout icon and in the top you can see that I've still got my perspective view. From the panel pull down menu, I'm gonna choose perspective and shot one camera. So now I'm seeing the view through what I'm calling my shot camera. So I'm gonna select that camera and move it back so we can start to compose our scene here. So I'll pull it back in the Z and you can see down here how that's helping me to frame the composition. And I can use my perspective view to get a little bit wider and change the composition here. And so I'd like to go through some of the settings on this shot camera so you can see how we can control the focal length, etc. So right here under camera attributes in the shape node, you can see a setting for the focal length. And if I drag this slider, you can see how I'm changing uh, the view on the bottom through that shot camera. I'm just gonna come down here and turn on the uh, frustrum so we can actually see that change also in the perspective view it just draws these lines that show what's being cropped there so if I go back to a 35 which is how it starts I can change it to a 50 and we get a little bit closer it's like we're zooming in and I can go up to a hundred and we're zooming in a little bit more and you can see that here in the perspective view so let's set it back to a 50 millimeter lens for the time being and then I'll scroll down here and show you some of these other attributes as well the film back section of the Maya camera is similar to controlling the body of a real world camera. And specifically the film gate is what allows you to control the sensor size of that specific camera that you want to work with. So there's a drop down menu here called film gate. And if I click on that, you can see that I can toggle through a couple of different choices for different kinds of 35 millimeter uh, film backs or, or sensor sizes. And these film gates are all based on real world camera sensor sizes. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. This particular website from Able Cine has a chart that lists all the common digital sensor sizes and they relate it to what is a super 35 millimeter uh, film gate. And if I scroll down here, you can see some of the different camera bodies that have different sensor sizes. So here's a phantom camera and an Arri Alexa camera, and here's a Canon camera. And what it's showing you is the relationship between this particular manufacturer's sensor size and the original uh, th Super 35 film gate. 
So what we can do is if we want to emulate one of these camera bodies, all we have to do is transcribe the sensor size from this chart and type that into Maya. So for example, if I want to create a new Maya camera that has the same sensor size as this Ari Alexa, I would have to type in these values into the Maya camera. So I'm going to switch over to Maya and type in 23.8 by 13.4 millimeters. So here's my millimeters and it is 23.8 by 13.4. And so now I've created a film back in Maya that matches the sensor size of that Ari Alexa. And what that means is, is that now if I come back up to my focal length and I start to put in different values in here, this would be as if I was changing the lens on that Ari Alexa camera. This is exactly how it would look as seen through that camera now here in Maya. So the properties of this camera are now identical to that of the Ari Alexa. There's a few more settings here I'd like to show you on the camera. If I scroll down to the fit resolution gate, you can see that's set to fill. What I'm gonna do in my shot panel, I'm gonna come over here to the view menu and I come down to camera settings. And if I turn on resolution gate, it gives me this cut in area that shows me which portion of the panel is actually gonna be rendered in the final frame. Now, if I come back over here to the fit resolution gate, and I set that to overscan so I can see all the outer edges of the current shot camera exactly the way it will be rendered. If I continue scrolling down here, I'm going to go to my output settings and I want to turn on renderable. And what that means is this shot camera will actually now be able to generate images that you can control in the render settings. So we can open our render settings now. And there's a couple of things I'll show you in here. If I scroll down to renderable cameras section, you'll see that there's two cameras in here, the original perspective camera and our new shot camera. What this means is that both of these cameras will be rendered every time I hit the render button. I don't wanna render the output from the perspective camera. So I'll click on this trash can icon to remove that perspective camera. Now the only camera that will be rendered is my shot camera. The next setting is the image size uh, presets. And as I change some of these presets, you can see how the shape of the cut-in changes to reflect what is the different choices in the resolution of the image. So those are some of the steps that you can go through to create your own custom camera inside of Maya. There is one more thing I'd like to show you and that is that now that we've gone through all these steps to create this custom camera, we can now export this camera and save it so that we can later reuse it in other scenes. So I'll show you how we can do that. If I come up here and select the camera in the outliner and I choose File, Export Selection, in the dialog box, I'm going to call this camera. So let's suppose I have a new scene that I want to uh, import this camera into. I'll select that camera and it comes in here at the origin. So I'll just move that camera back a little bit. And I can look through that camera here and see what the composition will look like. And if I want, I can add a second camera to this scene. So I'll do it again. I'll say file import, choose the camera and that comes in at the origin and now you can see I have shot number one and shot number two is my second camera and I can reposition that camera to get a different perspective on the same scene. And I can look through that camera in another panel. So that's a simple way that you can create a custom camera inside of Maya based on a real world camera and then reuse it in your scenes to get the shots and the angles that you want.